I wanted to cover in today's lesson the question I get asked most, which is what is UX design and how can you get started? This is a question that every beginner asks and not many people can find a coherent answer to. There's lots of information on the internet, lots of long articles, lots of opinions. I'm going to give you my opinion from over 10 years in the, experience, in the industry, working as a UX designer, as a UI designer, explain where UX fits in into the uh, design cycle and why it's so important to big companies. So let's get going. The first thing I'm going to start with is a quote from a world famous designer, Dieter Rams. So he was in charge of the design for Braun when they made some classic products. If you haven't already, check out Dieter Rams, Google him. You'll see a lot of Apple products are referenced or similar in nature, inspired by some of Dieter Rams earlier work, the cheese grater iMac, the iPod. Johnny Ive obviously was a huge fan of Dieter Rams and used some of his influence in his own work. So definitely check him out. But he says, good design is making something intelligible and memorable, but great design is making something memorable and meaningful. So what UX is, UX is designing software for machines that is memorable and meaningful for the user. So that's something that I wanted to include in here just so I could give you a snippet of what I actually think UX is. And it's really important that we include memorable and meaningful because yeah, anyone can design software for machines. But the, a way that software is memorable and meaningful for the user is something that's easy to use, something that's beautiful on the eye, something that's intuitive and something that leaves a lasting impression with your customer or user and that's something that we want to really get across we want to make something that's the best we can make it we want to make something that's beautiful and we want to make something that actually stays with someone and the only way we can do that is by applying lots of different techniques and really making something not just visually beautiful but we want to make it meaningful as well so we want to make the user feel like they can use the product we want to make sure that they can feel like at one with it and don't feel stupid for not knowing how to navigate the website or something. But yeah, so that's a that's a key a key in this design process that we want to make it memorable and meaningful. So on the screen now, this is the UCD, which is the user centered design process. And this is how you create any digital product in um it's kind of like a format for how you design something. So there's four different stages. The first one is research. Then it goes to concept design, then it goes to detailed design, and then it goes back to test. And you can see underneath I've put where UX fits in and where UI fits in. So UI is part of the UX design process, but UI is a specific, UI stands for user experience, um, sorry, user interface, and UX stands for user experience. UI is a very specific um, visual design field. There's lots of different ways you can work in UI and it's a, it's a rich subject by itself, but it fits within this user centered design process and you can see UX goes before and it goes after. So we'll just talk about a little bit about different ones. So starting off, at its core, every business solves a problem and you wouldn't have a business if you didn't solve a problem. People need you to do something and that's why they come to you to solve that problem. So in the research phase, as a designer, you need to understand exactly what problem you're trying to solve for your user. That might be, as a bank, you're trying to um, give someone a loan, and as a user, you, you need a loan for a house or a car. So as a, as a UX designer, you need to understand that problem and then understand the solution that the company is trying to provide for that. And that might be just a tiny bit of a web page that you're trying to, like a, like a tool for getting a mortgage or you might be designing the actual whole experience for the bank so you need to understand in detail that problem that you're trying to solve and there's lots of different research techniques that a, U, that a UX designer can use and to be honest in the last couple of years um, UX researcher roles have actually been coming onto the market a lot more and that's something that I'm seeing grow as a industry by itself so you can come into UX I came in as a predominantly as like a magazine designer as a graphic designer but you can also come into ux someone who studies like human computer interaction at university or college and you can come in that way as more um, a researcher more interested in the actual like testing and that has its own um home world that you can actually focus in on so in the research phase, you can do lots of things. You can um, you can do user testing, so you can interview users. You can talk to them about 
what their problem is you can create personas which a lot of companies do so that's kind of like a fictional representation of a user um, who they will then reference throughout the rest of the project so say you were working for a bank and say you've created Steve Steve had a family you, you would explain on a like an A4 piece of paper who Steve was what is what his life was like, what his family was like, what his job was, why he was using the product. And it just gives the designers something to go off so they can understand the target audience a bit better. But there are loads of other research techniques you can use. There are things called diary studies. When it, we did one in the BBC, so say you, were, say you were doing a big website, you can actually hire a researcher to go out um, and be with someone for a full day and see in different situations when they're using the app. Uh, how long they use it for, and it, it's more of an in-detailed interview, but it, it lasts for a full day rather than um, a single session. But yeah, there, so that's that's the research phase. There are lots of other things. Um, but I'll probably go into it a little bit more detail in a future video. But then that moves on to the concept phase. So as a UX designer, once you have all your research done, you understand the problem, you can then propose a solution to the problem, and that's in the concept phase. So that could be working with pen and paper to start with so and you'll probably work in a team so you, you might have another ux designer with you you'll understand the problem you'll bring all your research together and then you'll just start like sketching out different ideas and that's fine to be on paper for now because um, and what you always want is maybe you want um someone from the business or someone who you're creating this idea for involved in this process because i always say it's a lot easier to throw away a piece of paper than um then throw away a detailed design. I know we all love going on the computer and designing the website from scratch, making it look great in Adobe XD or Figma, and then um, and then someone to come along and say, oh, they don't want it like that. That's kind of heartbreaking, and it wastes a lot of time on your part. So in the concept phase, do things on pen and paper. You can even take photographs. You can make simple prototypes if you want at this stage. Um, and that... You work with your your people in the business, or you work with people you're producing this for, and then once they kind of agree the flow that you uh, you want, you might draw little screens and say, okay, this is the first screen, this goes to this, and you'll do it really rough. But once you understand what you're creating, then you'll create something called a wireframe. So a wireframe is it's all, you've probably seen it. It's like a boxy version of a website. So there's no images, there's no colors, there's no detailed fonts all it is is really simple um just boxes with arrows going to places and buttons on there and it's just a digit a first digital version of the sketch and the whole idea of making it simple is it takes out all the conversation about images about font choice about color about detailed design which comes later so all you're really focusing on is the flow of the website how you move from one place to another how you get people to um what you're trying to get the website to solve. So you do all your core functionality and all your core detailed um, kind of like interaction and design of the website. You do that in the concept phase. And then once that's done, you can then hand it over to the detailed design phase, which is where UI comes in. And UI could either be done by a UX designer. So product design is kind of uh, a new word on the market, which is combining UX and UI. Or you can give it to someone more graphically design focused and they will put the UI together. So what they'll do is they'll take the wireframe from the UX designer and then they'll apply the look and feel of the company that they're working for. So in a lot of big companies, they have a design language. And a design language is it's kind of like an internal website. And it's a set of like fonts, colors, buttons, it's daily around their own images. So in Barclays, I worked on the design language team, and this is something that we created. So any new website or app within Barclays would then use this style, and it makes it a lot easier for this design phase. And it also keeps um, a similarity between everything that you produce, and that's something that's really key, keeping consistency. Because even big companies, sometimes you'll see they'll have four or five websites, and they won't look anything like each other. Um, and that's because they've spent too much time on doing different UI um, for different websites. Yes, you'll, have, you'll bring different designers in, will have their own ideas, and they'll do something cool, but then it won't look anything like the brand. So a lot of these companies have brand teams who keep keep all this an eye on. If you're working for more like a startup or you're creating your own design, then this is where kind of like a graphic designer's flair comes in, then you'll be able to choose what fonts you like, what colors, what the color palette is, what uh, images you use. So it really depends on the 
I'd say the size of the company, how much freedom a graphic designer is going to have within this UI phase. But you're basically the architect of the website is the UX designer, and the UI designer is more the decorator, the, the flair of a website and bringing it to life in colour, more the artist. But they work together, and then at the end, when they'll have um, they'll have this a realistic looking website they'll be able to prototype it. So we work in tools like Adobe XD, Figma and Sketch, InVision. Uh, these tools, are for, you can do UX and UI design in there. And a lot of, because a lot of big people, are, because a lot of good designers have worked at big companies for a long time, they'll have this, like it's called the UI kit. So that's why I talked about them like a design language. And they, they might skip the wireframe stage out and design straight in the look and feel of the, of the website because that's not going to change if, if, if it's a big company so depending on where you are the, the little differences will happen in this but then at the end of it you'll then work with developers and you'll hand over all your designs to developers they all make the website it will then go through a whole process of um, development it will then go live and then that's where the ux phase kind of kicks back in again and this is where you um you test it so you'll test what you've built with different users you can test the actual build sometimes it's better to test the build but you can also test your prototypes in Barclays we had users come in they um, we interviewed them we've t we tested like simple prototypes with them uh, and you can really find kinks in what you've designed because you'll see people clicking on buttons they shouldn't do or people go into different places in the website that they shouldn't do so you'll really during that testing phase you'll find out a lot about the website that you're building and you'll be able to hone it and um, and make it better but then yeah so then it, it's developed and it's made and it's released and then that kind of goes full circle and it goes back into the research phase because then you'll be able to look at analytics from how the website's performed it's really really important to track how how your website's done because a lot of people just design something release it and then it's done and they don't really think about oh okay because a lot of like most websites will have Google Analytics installed, so you can check how many people are coming to the website, how long they're staying for, what they're clicking on, and that kind of will reset this whole process. And then you can then go into a concept phase on how to improve them once you have those base fundamentals. So, such a good uh, process. It's it's a revolving wheel almost, and you can always go from test into research because you'll have the website developed and then you'll have some analytics to work from. So another thing I want to talk about is a Japanese concept called Kaizen, which is continuous change for the better. And that, that I think sums up UX and that design cycle perfectly. So a design is never finished. Um, this is what made the Japanese car industry so successful. The Japanese invented lots of processes around how we work that we still use today in, um, in creating software. And that's something is never done. You can always improve, like I said, the process went from develop to then analyze again. And every cycle of Kaizen, which is um, a cycle through the process, you'll gradually improve, 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 and you'll have something great at the end of it. So I think that's something that you should apply to every walk of life. Never think anything's done. Always release something, analyze it, and you never know what you think. This is this this helps people get over the idea of perfection as well. A lot of people won't release something until they think it's perfect. But I always think it's best to release something when it's eighty percent done rather than rather than perfect and then apply Kaizen to it because some things I've released and I've looked at the analytics and I found, whoa, that's performing completely different than I expected. And that's almost more important than waiting for perfection because perfection can't come without the without the numbers and without the analytics and the research phase to make it better. So why is UX so important? And this brings me on to how a digital business works. So every business sells a product. That's that's how they exist. And that product makes money. And um, in the last few years, the way we sell products online has changed. And we sell it now through, people don't really buy adverts like they used to anymore. Like in the old days, people used to make a product, then they'd go to an agency like a Don Draper. They'd, um, they'd then have an advert on TV. The advert would be glamorous, be made by an agency. And then people would just be expected to buy the product. There'd be no tracking of how many people saw the advert and bought it. Maybe this was in a newspaper or in a magazine. But 
because we've got such detail on analytics now online um, and the reach of online is so much um, you can actually do your own advertising through content marketing and you'll you'll see that everywhere so you'll see a company will have um, like they might produce content so they might write articles they'll have their website with, with, their, with their product on but they'll also have a blog section where they'll write loads of content so a magazine so that content is kind of designed to interest people who might be interested in the product so what they'll then do is they'll then have social media accounts so like i've got my youtube account there'll be linkedin accounts uh, facebook accounts instagram accounts and what those accounts are for they're to talk to your target uh, audience so, so you'll connect with people on there but that's a place to push your content that's away from your website so my website is com. my product is my course and my social media channel is where I produce content and hopefully some people who like that content that's out on there will then follow through the process and they'll go to your product and then eventually buy something from you as a business and that's how every business online works and uh, it's the honest truth of how every business operates so you'll see this everywhere you'll see someone uh, pushing something for free on social media because that's what people want that's how you get people interested it's called a lead so they'll offer you a free pdf or something you will then um, give your email in exchange for that pdf so you'll consume that content and then what they'll do is they'll contact you via email or via social again to keep you in this loop of viewing content. And then hopefully at the end, you'll like the content so much you'll go and see the product. And then at the end of it, you'll make a purchase and become a customer and then hopefully become a loyal customer and create that relationship going forward. But as you can see, it starts off with a thousand people, then a hundred people might be interested in the content, then 10 might view the product and then one might purchase it. So this is where content marketing and, and ux comes in because social goes out to many people and um you can see you have to generate lots and lots of views to get that single sale at the end and that's why ux is so important because ux comes in at every stage in this process and helps the funnel they can make one two percent differences so say your product page might have ten percent so ten to one people might buy it but if a ux designer could improve that by only um 10 to 2 then that's 50 percent more revenue for the company and that you make that ux designer might just analyze the web web page say okay it's um it's a bit too long or this button text like some of these changes are really simple like the color of a button the image it'll give a different emotion to the to the audience but if they can change tiny things on this and help improve these numbers then you'll see massive revenue growth at the end and that's why UX is so important. That's why UX designers get paid so much by companies and why it's such a highly valued um, thing to go into because you are essentially improving revenue at the very bottom end by just improving this funnel. And you're also doing it for the, the right reasons. You're um, Because customers do want to engage with your content and, and, and there are products that people do want to buy. That's how, kind of how the world works. But people only want to do that if they have a good experience that's memorable and meaningful throughout. And that's something a UX designer can do. And they can help make the process smoother and then go into customer relationships and, and there's loads. But UX design is so, so important in helping the bottom end by improving this funnel. So I just want to quickly talk about a team, how you, how, how you fit into a team when you go into work in a company. So I've got 12 positions here. So on some teams, there's only one UX designer and one UI designer. That's that's how things, in my experience, have, um, have worked. And then there'll be a project manager who will oversee the project. And then there'll be a BA. So BA stands for business analyst, and there'll be something who'll work with the UX designer um, and help. They'll help you understand the requirements from not the user's point of view, but from the business's point of view. So they'll understand what the they'll be the ones who will let you know what the business wants, and you'll work with them quite a bit. Then there is a thing called a scrum master, and a scrum master is someone. This this is a position that can change. So at the bottom, I've put. Um, how we work is it's, it's called a three week sprint and this is part of an agile design process um, and, and below that are just the meetings that take place but this is this is a new thing that's taken over the industry so every three weeks you want to produce something at the end which you can release and that and that kind of gets 
over the idea of making a website over like nine months and you do design development and then testing so this you do smaller chunks um the idea of that is it's kind of kaizen is to get something released see how it performs do it in small chunks and it's it, it just it seems to be a better process because you're testing more regularly you're not waiting for a massive thing to be released and then realize it's all broken at the end you're doing it in chunks and it's more manageable but a scrum master is someone that could change every three weeks is just someone who helps that process along so a po is a product owner that's the most important um i guess they're the manager and so the project manager looks after the the work but the product owner is someone who is represented for the business so they're the person who you want to deliver this to they'll be the stakeholder for the business and they're the person who decides what goes in and what goes out of the website so there's someone that's really important then normally you'll have something like four front-end developers who will make the designs that you do and then you'll have some api developers which is back-end developers who will make it all work so that can chop and change but i found that to be quite um in my experience what a team in the uk looks like then there are more common um there are different types of things you can do so this is called the sprint um so this is a one week sprint so don't get confused with the last one which was a three week sprint this is um something that you might do very very rarely but it's it's a good way of um getting an idea out so this was a book by jake knapp jake knapp who was um from google ventures and he put this out a couple of years ago and his whole idea was if you have an idea then you can in a week you can test something with users and this is something we tried in barclays and it was quite successful for getting it's quite good for startups because it helps you get your idea off the ground and what you all do is you set a week out you get a ux designer a ui designer um you get some people from the business and on monday you sit down and you talk about the idea you 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 put all all the information you need you sit down in the room for hours discuss this maybe make some notes and then on tuesday the designers will take all that information they'll sketch ideas and they'll 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 maybe really really simply wireframe it or do it on paper they'll take that back to the stakeholders on wednesday who will then vote and decide which one's best on thursday you will then build a really really quick prototype in adobe xd or figma it, it doesn't need to look nice it doesn't you just want to get that all out and then on friday you get someone and you test it with customers so it's a really it's quite high pressure there's quite a lot of work to do in that week you don't want to do it every week without otherwise you'll burn people out but it's something that you can do to get ideas off the ground if you're a startup or if you want to test something unique and this time sensitive for that thank you guys for watching today's video if you enjoyed it and you're actually interested about a career in ux design then you might want to check out my brand new course which is available at anthonyconvoy.com the link's in the description together we spend some time and we go over the whole design process and the goal of the course is to get you a project uh, like a case study in your portfolio which shows that you know more than just designing in figma so together we we create an app for a farmer's market and we start by research so we create user personas together so i show you how to do this in fig jam which is free software and then you create your own so the whole goal is you have something at the end of it to show so we talk about how to label and navigate websites and you do a card sort yourself so that's something that shows that you understand how how to do all of that in your portfolio then we take that and we do some uh, we do some wireframing and we do some user journeys to show how people navigate through the app and we actually design that out and then we take that all into figma develop a beautiful looking user interface that looks like a professional website and app from scratch you see how i do it and you can follow along and do it yourself you can then test that on your own phone then you then test that with your friends and family improve the app and then from there, we make sure that we it's accessible to everyone and we want to show some accessibility stuff in there. So we install a plugin, make sure that the 8% of men who are colorblind can uh, view the app properly and understand it. And then from there, you can write it up and have a case study. But my goal is to hold your hand and walk you through and mentor you through the process. So at least in your portfolio, when you go for an interview, you can have confidence in knowing that you're not just a Figma designer that you understand from start to scratch how to design digital products. So the link's in the description. I hope you check it out. And uh, if you want to stay around on YouTube, then check the next video out. It's going to help you even more. So see you soon.